A class three then for the last. We're back up here over the 1650 for the popular handicap headed by Hang's Decision. It's a five-time winner. All those wins have been between 12 and 1400 metres. So Harrier Jet will bounce from barrier two here. Derek Lung in the saddle. Winning face, chasing a course and distance hat trick. Playwise, big run behind Pretty Bohemia last time out, who's three pounds worse off this time around. Pretty Bohemia. Glorious Artist makes his Hong Kong debut. Energetic class being placed on his last three starts. And while May Baby goes up in class, May Whale roll forward under Alvin Ung. Back at the touchscreen again for the uh, the final event, and the pace it looks like Brett comes from uh, wide out of here. Happy Spirit and Wame Baby, baby uh, trying to find the front and roll from there. Yep, you would think that is the case, Andrew. Both noted front running types, Happy Spirit and uh, and Wame Baby, and they may set up in that order. Uh, Playwise has drawn ten. He was able to lead and get handy or get handy to the speed last start from two, but he'll have to try and slot in here from a, a wideish barrier. Harriet Jet stepping up to the longer trip for the first time. So he's a horse potentially that could maybe sort of have the pace to potentially try and kick up on the back of Wame Baby. Of course, Winning Faith hasn't had a run for a couple of months. He's had a head injury, but he's been back to the trials recently and performed well. Super Lucky's also been to the trials recently and uh, performed OK against Telecom Man, who won on the weekend, and he ran better last start. Mm. Super Lucky. All right. And uh, what have you been seeing, Paul? Yeah, well, the first one we're going to have a look at here is Playwise. He's been going nicely. Uh, he's been going well. It was a good run for second at his last start. Uh, Zach Purden on the board. Um, and he uh, should get a nice run from 10. He can, I think they'll sort of break up a bit and he can slot in. And his track work's been good. Pretty Bohemia. He finally won a race, this one. He'd taken a little while. was his, at his 11th go. But he'd always threatened to win one. But he did win one nicely enough. And uh, he's had plenty of work since. And his track work's been uh, pretty good as well. So he's maintained his condition. And I thought Nitro Express, he's just a, sort of a, a quiet achiever, this horse. He just goes along his business without too many problems. And um, uh, he's doing that once again here this morning. So not a bad piece from him. All right. OK, we'll start with, we saw him there in track work, Playwise and uh, trainer Michael Friedman. Michael, in the last, play-wise, second last start at Happy Valley, you probably thought he'd won the race, didn't you? Yeah, it was, uh, it was close. It was one of those nights. I think I had three seconds on the night, a couple of them pretty narrow ones. So, yeah, look, he's, he's done a good job too for only a limited amount of runs. He's settled in well. He also trialled here ten days ago and it was a nice trial. Um, drawn a bit awkwardly on Wednesday night, uh, out a bit, but... Uh, you know, I think he's he's the kind of horse that can roll forward and take up a position, you know, where he needs to. And uh, Zach's a very good tactical rider in that sense. So I think if if he can get a bit of luck from where he's drawn, he should be quite competitive. He showed pretty good speed in that trial, but overall, were you very happy with the way he he uh, went in that one? Yeah, he um, he was just out to sort of keep his fitness up, so he wasn't out to do any too much. And I don't think Zach was sort of too too. Uh, uh, aggressive on him late in the trial um, and he came through the trial really well he seems nice and bright so he goes in fit and well tomorrow night yeah just having his fourth start you'd imagine there's still a bit of uh, upside to him that's uh, play wise um, let's have a look at the horse though who's here on the hat trick and uh, that is winning faith um, really found a home here at, uh, at happy valley um, this is the the last one we're going to have a look at um, I say he's been pretty strong on both of them, just keeps getting better. When he first arrived, you know, a big brute of a horse, isn't he? Around 1270 pound. Uh, it looked like he was going to take a little bit of racing before he found his, his full fitness, and that was the case. Uh, it was a sort of six or seven starts before he started to hit a little bit of form. And then they brought him to the valley up to the mile, and he's gone bang, bang, Paul. Yeah, he's looked good doing it in both times. He's a very progressive horse, I think, this one. And you know, he has had that in head injury. He won't be playing rugby again for a while, but uh, he's come out of it OK. He's trolled nicely, and uh, I can't see why he can't complete the hat trick. Mm. They did geld him as well after he arrived. He arrived yeah. in cold geld, and that's helped with the, uh, the weight management yes. side of things. <laughs> Just um, amongst other things. Yeah. <laughs> This is uh, the trialer. You mentioned Brett, he's been off the track for a little while. So uh, this is at Happy Valley as well. A sort of a nice lead up coming in. Well, that's right. I mean, you, when they haven't, he hasn't raced since the 10th of January. So it's, you know, getting close to two months. But uh, just wanted to show you uh, how he's going along. He wanted to hang a little bit here in the stretch, um, but still went on to do the job quite okay. So um, look, I, I'm. 
I'm going to tip him, but I'm not feeling as confident as I would have been had he have not had the longer gap between the runs and obviously the head injury that Paul um, you know, alluded to. So I think he's still definitely a winning chance, but uh, the two runs off maybe brings him back to the rest of the pack a little. All right. So what about uh, of the pack? Super lucky. His chance is coming in. Well, he's one of these ones that's pressing on forward too. I mentioned he trialled uh, quite nicely since this performance against Telecom Man, who came out and won on the weekend. Yeah, it was a good win, probably, that Telecom Man as well. And, uh, look, he ran nicely. He got the gap through the inside at the right time. He's got barrier eight, so he'll probably settle just behind midfield here. Joe Marrera does jump aboard, takes over from um, Alexi Bedell. So, uh, look, it wasn't a bad run from him. Yeah, he's been a 1,000 to 1, basically, all starts. He was 70s yeah. there. It won't be any $70 with Joe no, jumping pretty, aboard. Pretty no, short. just his sixth start as well. Mm. So, uh, yeah, expect the price uh, to be a fair bit shorter. Was he 580 at uh, the moment? Mm. Last horse we're going to take a, a check on is this uh, first starter out of the, uh, the UK, Glorious Artists, raced under the same name when trained by Charlie Hills there. Two wins in the UK at Wolverhampton on the all-weather. He did, and he's, he's worked well on this uh, surface as well here in uh, Hong Kong. He's at £1,080. He's had four trials, so he's another one that's going to come in pretty fit. I, try, I looked at putting him in the numbers, but I was just worried about barrier 12, so I'm going to watch him go round, but he's a horse that wouldn't surprise if he did all right. Yeah, he's got the visitor's draw, hasn't he? First mm. up, gate 12 over the 16.50. It's no easy task from there, even if you're a horse in form yeah. Yeah. and got race hard fitness on your side. Nice enough trial, nice enough type of horse, but uh, happy to s just sit aside and watch him go around from that draw. All right, OK, so that's glorious, glorious artist, uh, even. Those are all the clues here, Paul. What do you end up with? I've gone with Winning Faith. I, I think he's a nice progressive horse that uh, is going through the grades. And I think he's still got rating points in hand. And that trial showed he hasn't lost too much. Pretty bohemian play-wise. Fought out the finish last time. I can see them fighting out second and third as well. I just went pretty bohemian over play-wise, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was the other way around. And Harriet Jett should get one of the nicest runs in the race, just in behind. I, I, I think he'll run quite nicely. So I went five, seven, six, and four. I'd, I'd be doing QQPs, though, with uh, the five, six, seven. I've tipped him as well, winning faith, for the same reasons, basically, that Paul's mentioned. But I am concerned about the long gap between runs and the little um, setback that he's had. So him on top, but I think the primary dangers of defeating him are pretty bohemia. Hang's decision is going to be my long shot. He's very well rated, drops in grade and play-wise. So 5-7-1-6. I'll play the 1-5-7 QQP. Uh, but play-wise is definitely a winning chance in the race as well. Yeah, included uh, for me, but I'm with winning faith as well. All right, as far as the stats are concerned, we're concentrating on Francis Loy's record with his trumped runs. The first three rates extraordinary. They are, aren't they? 48% here from his 42 runners. He's had 10 wins, 6 seconds and 4 thirds, as you can see from the graphic there. So there's... Um Look, he's doing pretty well, and 48% uh, is a pretty good stat in any man's language. Win for Charity is uh, one of the ones he's got. I think he can run nicely. He's got two in, actually, uh, Golden Glory being the other. Yep, he's the other trumped horse uh, from that stable. All right, keep an eye on them. Who else are we keeping an eye on, Paul? Um, well, my best bet, and that's where we're up to, so I'm going to go with the judge here. I think he's a really nice price. He's going to start $9, $10. $3.70 a place, and I think he can overcome and beat Ha Ha Heart. Uh, so he's my best. My long shot being Japon's three time winner already this season, getting down to that sort of rating as well. And at 25 to 1, uh, he's worth a throw at the dartboard, and I'll play my play in that with uh, Cloud Nine and Garlic here. I think the hardest to beat the favourites, I think they'll run well. So I went 1 5 6 in the QQP in race number three. Smart boy for me, race seven, number five for Umberto Rispoli. Uh, racing well, he should get a lovely spot in the run, hopefully, and hit the line well. Hang's decision in the last gets the drop in grade. He's a smart horse on his day, 8 1, he'll be a decent price. And in that last race, Hang's decision winning Faith Pretty Bohemia QQP. All right, an Italian job for Brett's. Uh, I'm with Paul, Pert and Poon for me. Fortune Booth, race six at uh, number one, better draw. It's a course and distance winner already. Hopefully, with a uh, bit of luck, he'll be hard to hold out. And Charity Wings uh, gets a turnaround uh, the weight here with Ha Ha Heart. So I think he can put in a big run as well. Ha Ha Heart, Charity Wings, and Hero Look for me as far as the play is concerned. Just about out of time, but uh, this time next week, we'll be very excited about the derby. That's mm -hmm. right. I think the official potential field might be announced tomorrow. Mm. So, uh, John Bay, stand by for that. Yeah, the barrier draw next uh, Thursday. Always important, that barrier draw. Yeah. It'll, it'll determine favouritism, I think.
All right, but that's the show. Thanks for watching. On behalf of Paul Brett and the rest of the team, hope we'll see you at Happy Valley. We will be racing to win. Good night. Good night.